Welcome back to another Digital Den mini class. And it is back to part two of the Halloween Photoshop series. If you have not watched part one, make sure that you jump back to the first episode. If you're watching on YouTube or the website, the card is in the top corner. If you're watching on Facebook, click on the playlist and go back one video. We're going to be picking things up exactly where we left off, which is the background has just been removed on our two images. I've got the one of me super scared here and the one of me scared but running away um, in this one. In this video, we are going to be taking uh, these two pictures and putting them into a spooky image to be able to give us uh, a nice spooky background. And then we're going to be adding some props as well to be able to really bring this scary photo to life. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, first things first, we're going to need those spooky images, the backgrounds and the props and all that stuff. And I don't want to go to Google to be able to just take those because, well, firstly, I'm Going to be putting this up on YouTube and Facebook. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to take anything that people could think I'm trying to sell for commercial use, yada, yada. So, I'm going to go to my favorite website on the internet, which is pixabay.com. As it says uh, here at the top, it says stunning free images and royalty free stock. And there are, it says 2.1, uh, 2.4 million high quality stock images on here. And the great thing is, is that at least everything that I've found says no attribution required and everything is totally free. So I love free stuff. So let's find some really fun free images. I'm just going to type in scary in the search and I'm going to see what we find here couple of pretty scary things going on here. We've got a spooky alien guy in the background, which is pretty scary, but there's not a lot of depth to the image. So not a lot for us to be able to play around with. This forest is pretty good, uh, but the edges of the image won't really allow for us to do a whole lot here. I'm going to scroll down a bit. I like uh, this one right here. I like this image a lot for what we're going for here because these trees I'm going to be able to remove uh, and then place back in to really add some depth to our uh, scary uh, picture that we are going to be trying to create here. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. And as you can see here, it says free for commercial use, no attribution required. So I don't need to give anybody any credit, but big thanks to Bergader uh for the <laughs> for this free uh image uh here so i'm gonna jump ahead into the video after i've already downloaded all of these and all of the props and then we're gonna jump right back into photoshop all right here we are back in photoshop i have made a folder of all kinds of spooky graphics i'm gonna go ahead and open up all of those and show you everything that i've downloaded here i've got the background that we were just talking about i found a couple of bats uh, here, as well as a couple of really scary looking zombie dogs that will be the thing that is chasing after us in these background images. So the first thing I need to do is take the pictures that we edited in the last video and add them to the background that we're going to be using here. Now, notably, uh, if I try to highlight everything with Control A or by grabbing the highlight tool and dragging it from the top left corner to the bottom right corner, I'm going to click on Control C to be able to copy. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste it. And uh oh, it looks like the background is still on my uh, on my image here. Why exactly? is that considering I removed it in the last video? Well, if you look over here in the layers panel in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that it has the background image, which is exactly what we're seeing on uh, on this picture here on this project. And then we also have the layer. Remember the the the, uh, the mask layer. Remember the mask from the last video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that mask and I'm going to click apply layer mask. Now it makes it so that this is exactly what it is. Um, and whenever I copy it and paste it here into our project, I can remove this first layer here and boom, there we have it. We've got this spooky uh, background and uh, the terrified version of me uh, in here on the picture. I'm going to do the exact same thing with this project as well. Highlight the mask layer, right click and click apply layer mask. Highlight everything with control A, control C to copy it, and then control V to paste everything. And there we go. We've got both uh, pictures of me, the frightened one and the other frightened one that's running away. So um, the, a couple of things that I would like to do here, I'd like to change the size of my person and I'd like to change where they are in the image. Um, I want to change the size of them because I'd like to be able to place them at different 
uh, depths of field here, different depths in the image. So this first one, the, the scared version here, um, I'm going to resize that by pressing control T to be able to bring up the resizing window here. Uh, and the nice thing is, is that it locks the image size so that I, I, I'm not going to uh, change, change the width and height differently um, to be able to make it so that I can uh, I can adjust things a little bit easier. If I did want to adjust my my um, things in a non locked way, I could hold shift um, and then I could make myself wider or thinner or what have you. Um, and then I can uh, adjust things that way. So I'm going to put myself back here. I think if I shrink myself down to about this, I'd say that that's pretty good for for back there in that area. And then I'm going to click on the uh, the move tool here in the top left to be able to lock the new size in place. And then I'm going to come over here to this layer and I'm going to just move myself down here to the bottom uh, corner so that it's like I'm running down this path here. Uh, I might even uh, adjust the orientation of myself a little bit, uh, kind of twisting myself by uh, coming over to the top corner of the sizing tool and moving just outside of it to be able to grasp the um the the rotation compass to be able to make it so that i can kind of twist myself so it makes it really feel like i'm running on the path a little bit more okay so i've got one version of me running down the path i've got another version of me that is uh scary that is frightened in the background uh but it is kind of strange like it looks like i'm standing in front of the tree or behind the tree rather but my arm is in the front of the tree so it kind of takes us out of the feel of the spooky image a little bit here so i'm going to come down to the background layer and i'm going to unlock it to allow for me to make some uh some good old-fashioned edits and I'm going to come up here to what used to be the magic wand tool, and I'm going to change it to the quick selection tool. This is a really cool tool that will allow for us to be able to highlight uh, different sections of our image. So I'm just going to grab this tree here. Oh, whoops, undo that. I'm going to grab this tree. Okay, there we go tree has been selected doesn't have to be 100% perfect and now i'm going to press control c and then control v okay control c of course copy control v paste um and what that did is that actually added a uh, a new layer for the tree on uh, on top of uh, of the existing background so that i can position myself behind it so that i really feel like i'm a part of this uh, of this background now, okay? So I'm gonna move myself a little bit behind the tree here, like maybe something is about to uh, come and attack me uh, sort of thing. And speaking of coming and attacking me, that's where we're these props are going to come in handy. I've got this one that's like about to take a bite and then this one here that is chasing after something. So first we're gonna highlight this uh, spooky dog here and we're gonna go up to image and then we are going to change the image rotation we are going to flip canvas horizontally. That way it is facing the complete other direction uh, so that whenever we move it over to uh, the, the final image that we're working on here, um, I can have it facing in the direction of this guy uh, right here, okay? All right, so I'm going to highlight him with Control A, Control C to copy and paste it here. And I'm going to make it so that he's chasing after me. I think he's a little bit big, maybe a little bit smaller would be good here. And maybe if I move myself a little further down the path, I can make it so that he's physically on the path there. He is hot on my heels, chasing right after me here. And if this zombie dog can move as fast as a regular dog, I have no chance of getting away. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's grab our other zombie dog that's about to take a bite. I'm going to do the same thing by coming up to image here in the top left, image rotation and flip canvas horizontal, highlight everything, copy and paste here. And I'm going to resize the image so that it is uh, a little bit more like the size of what the background is. I'd say that size is pretty good. I'm going to move things around here so that it's like he's kind of taking a bite out of me. Maybe he's taking a bite out of the side of me behind this tree. Maybe I'll uh, move myself around a little bit here to be able to make sell that a little bit more. Kind of twist myself a bit. Maybe he's uh, he's kind of ripping into me there. Maybe we'll even um, add some, some blood 
a little bit. Not to get too graphic here on this image, but I think that this should be okay. Come up here to the paintbrush tool. And uh, there, there's all kinds of different brushes that are on the paintbrush tool here. If you just click on this drop down arrow, um, I like some of the different splatter options here. I'm just going to click this first one, come back over here and just kind of, uh, I'm going to do it on the background layer, just kind of grab a little bit of <laughs> uh, a draw, just a little bit of blood going on here, a little, a little bit more than, than probably is necessary. I'm actually going to undo that last one. So it's like, maybe he's ripping my arm off or, or something really horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there, and I think that that looks uh, pretty good. Um, I'm going to twist myself a little bit more here to be able to hide my foot. Uh, I'm just going to move. There we go. Now both my arm and my foot are hidden behind this tree, and. Uh, who knows what the dog is doing back there? Something terrible that's clearly this version of me is not going to make it out alive. Um, I think that this actually looks pretty good. I think I'm going to add a couple more bats just to demonstrate a couple other tools. I'm going to grab this lasso tool and I'm going to grab which bat looks good. I think this one down here looks pretty good. I use the lasso tool to highlight just a specific bat. Copy and paste that into this image back here and change the size of the bat to be able to more fit in with the, the background here. He's flying in, maybe going to see the blood that's going on here and go, hey, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna maybe get a bite for myself in there. Um, let's see, one other bat I think would be good here. Maybe this one flying after the other version of me. Okay, copy and paste that in there. And maybe I will grab the quick selection tool here once again to demonstrate that even further. Grab this tree real quick, copy and paste that. And then I'm going to grab the bat, Whoop, whoops. Grab this bat and make sure that it is behind that layer. So one of the things that's easy to lose focus of is where the layers are uh, in your layer panel here. Uh, but that kind of comes with practice over time. You kind of figure things out a little more. All right, so I'm going to move my, uh, this, this bat here behind this tree. Now it's like he's kind of flying in uh, a little bit there from, from behind the tree. And I think that this looks pretty good. I've, got, uh, I've been able to demonstrate a handful of tools there. I've got the version of me that's running away from this dog. I've got this dog that's kind of laying into me back here and a couple extra bats that are just to kind of fill out the scene a little bit more here. I think that this looks pretty solid. Uh, now it's time to add some spooky text, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna grab this text tool here and type um, I'm going to make sure to uh, click on the top layer here just to make sure that the text goes on top of everything because the layers, you know, are, are separated by it kind of they the layers help us add depth to our image right. So I'm going to just come up here along the top and type in happy Halloween um, and then make sure that I highlight the text and change the size of them so that they are quite a bit larger I'm Going to type in like 500 whoops. Oops, changing the size of the text here to 500. There we go. That's pretty good. Happy Halloween. I actually like this text, but if I didn't, I could come through here and I could scroll through all the different text options there. I'd say that looks pretty good. Happy Halloween. I can change a, a little bit of the things of the text here. I could actually, I want to put the text in the background a little bit. Nah, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to right click on the text layer and click on blending options there and add a drop shadow. That always makes the text look a little bit better. I like that. Maybe a bit of an outer glow. Lower the opacity on that a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. There we go. And there we have our spooky image. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out here. So I have officially finished this, uh, this spooky image. Now it's time for me to save it. Um, and I'm actually going to wait until the next video to be able to dive into that further. If you just want a quick save, 
Um, I would recommend just uh, saving a copy as, uh, and then it brings up the options for a variety of different formats. JPEG is pretty good for just a general image. PNG is good if you would like to be able to have a transparent background or a little bit of a higher quality image. Uh, so save it as one of those two if you want to finish that project up here. But there are a lot of different options that go into, uh, it's, that you should take into account when saving your images. So that's why I'm going to be saving more of those details for the next video, as well as a couple other things that you can do here in Photoshop. If you would like a further deep dive, I know that I really quickly jumped into how to do a lot of these different things here. Uh, if you'd like a more of a deep dive into how to use Photoshop altogether, I highly recommend that you take a universal class or a LinkedIn learning class, and you can use your library card to be able to do that for free. Uh, click on the LinkedIn learning or the uh, the universal class links uh, that will be at the end of the video here if you're watching it on YouTube or on our website, uh, or you can always click on the playlist on Facebook to be able to jump back to the universal class or LinkedIn learning uh, to be able to learn more about how to take those classes. And you can take like many hour long classes uh, to be able to learn how to do every single thing you could possibly ever want to know in Photoshop. So check that out there. So uh, I'll be back again next Monday for the finale of this series. But I hope that you've been enjoying this class so far and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching these Digital Den mini classes.